In this video, you're going to learn how to use Salesforce Flow to take your business requirements and turn them into automated processes. Flow is Salesforce's preferred automation tool under the Clicks Not Code slogan. And with Salesforce retirement of other automation tools, it is essential to learn the basics of flow. To be honest, I've witnessed many people working with Salesforce struggle to adopt this new technology. I think this can be boiled down to two main factors. Flow is more complex and flow is much more like Apex than Process Builder. And yes, these are real issues, but with someone contrasting the old and the new, these can be overcome and learn flow. We will start by walking through the basics of flow. Then I'm gonna guide you through four real world examples by going from business requirement to how to build a process builder to how to build using flow. My name is Justin and I run a bespoke Salesforce consultancy. If you are looking for more info, check the links below. Flow is a visual automation tool Workflows can be built using pre-built elements to turn business logic into data automation. All flows can be categorized into two main scenarios, updating data in the background and collecting information from the user. Flows consist of elements, which can perform various tasks. Elements are categorized into three types data, working with existing or new data in Salesforce, logic, make decisions and traverse data, or interaction, use pre-built actions to perform various tasks. Additionally, all resources can be seen under the toolbox on the left. You can open the toolbox using the following icon. The toolbox contained all the resources used within a flow. Additionally, you can create additional resources to perform things like store static data, store data that can be changed, or calculate data on the fly. One of the foundations of business automation is updating fields on a record based on a set of criteria. You have three record types for cases, email, phone, and text to update these following fields based on the record type, subject, and status. If we want to see this in action, we can go to the case tab inside of Salesforce, create a new case, fill in the required fields, and save the record. Once the record is saved, we can see a dynamic subject is generated for the case. We can change the record type, save the record, and see a new subject for the changed record type. To build this in Process Builder, we start off by creating a new process, Case Process. This will run on the case object when it is created or edited. From here, we can add a branch to check if the case record has a record type of email. Then, we can update the case with some specific values. For example, status is new, a unique subject that references the contact's first name. We can then duplicate this branch by doing the same for the phone and the text record types. And if we want to replicate this functionality inside of Flow, we can start off by going to the Flow Builder, create a new record triggered flow, selecting the case object, trigger when a record is created or updated. One of the initial differences between Flow and Process Builder is that we can select for an optimization for fast field updates, or actions and related records. The flavor text of the two options reveal the intention behind them before the record is saved to the database and after the record is saved to the database. These are a direct reflection of how Apex works. Luckily, these descriptions are very apt, so use them accordingly. In this case, we will be using the fast field updates option. From here, we can use the decision element to check the record type, give the element a name, and look at the record's record type's name. We can use this plus element to create additional decisions and duplicate all decisions for the text and phone types. Then we can modify the record triggered from the flow. 
we can add an update triggering record element under the check email decision branch. We can give the element a unique name, set the status to new, and map the subject. To create a dynamic value like we did for Process Builder, we need to create a new resource, select the formula resource type, give the resource a name like email subject, select the data type of text, add the formula to the box. You can use the resource box to get the correct syntax for the contact's name. We can then save the resource, then duplicate this work for the phone and text branch. Additionally, we can open the toolbox on the left and view all elements and resources used to create the flow. Now we can save and activate the flow, and this will grant the same workflow as the demo. If you are looking for additional practice, try any of the following. Give a default value if there is no contact related to the case. Make one formula for all case types. Only enter the flow when a record is created or the record type changes. By the way, if you're interested in more Salesforce content, hit subscribe. It helps me know to create more content just like this. In this scenario, let's assume we have a custom object invoice related to the opportunity through a lookup. We have an amount and an invoice date field on the invoice object. When an opportunity is moved to close one, create a new invoice object related to the opportunity, where the amount is the opportunity amount and the invoice date is today. And we can see the custom invoice object configuration here. Starting from the opportunity list view, we can create an opportunity, fill in the required data, mark the opportunity as closed one, see the invoice is created, navigate to the invoice and see the related data. If we go back to the opportunity, we can edit the record and see that no additional invoice is created. To create this in Process Builder, we can create a new process, Opportunity Process. Then, we can make the process run when a record changes, set the object as opportunity, start the process when a record is created or edited, add execution criteria where the opportunity stage name equals close one, set the execution when specified changes are made to the record, then add an action create record, change to a type of invoice, map the fields accordingly, and use a formula to map the invoice date as today. Then, save and activate the process. To create in Flow, we can jump into Flow Builder, create a record triggered flow, select the opportunity object, trigger when a record is created or updated, set entry conditions for when the opportunity is closed one, we can also set this to run when a record is updated to meet the criteria. And we can select the optimization for actions and related records. Now, we wanna create a related record and we can do so by adding a create records element, giving the element a descriptive name, marked as use separate resources and literal values, this allows us to build the mapping inside the create record elements, set the object as uh, our custom invoice object, start mapping fields with the appropriate values. Keep in mind we use the record syntax to access values from the record going through a flow. We can select the values of the field, and we can also create a resource for more complex mappings. In this case, we want to use the today formula to get the current date when the invoice is created. We can open the toolbox on the left to see all elements used. We can then save and activate to see this working like our demo. Looking for an extra challenge? Try looking at the related invoice before creating to ensure that duplicates are never created.
In this scenario, let's assume you are a sales manager running a team of salespeople. You want to be informed when close dates are pushed back by 30 days or more. You can use email alerts to send a notification to you when this occurs. Inside an opportunity, we can edit the opportunity and push the close date back over 30 days. We will then receive a corresponding email that describes the situation. Before we can build this in process builder, we need to build an email alert to send an email. We can use this classic email template to send an email to a given recipient. We can then build this email alert where we use the previously created email template and the recipient is the stakeholder, in this case me. From here, we can create a new process, select the opportunity object, run when the record is created or edited, add a criteria node, use the following formula to check if the close date has been changed and has been moved back 30 days, add an email alert that uses the previously created email alert and then we can save and activate the process builder. To create inside of flow builder, we can select a record triggered flow, set the object as opportunity, make the flow run when a record is created or updated, set the entry conditions as the close date is changed equals true. We can then save the flow and give a descriptive name like email pipeline health. From here, we can add a decision element and give the element a name, make the outcome greater than 30 days. We want to compare the old close date to the new close date, which we can do so by using the close date from before the record was saved to the database by using the record prior variable. We then want to use the less than operator and we want to compare this to a new formula resource and we can get the desired calculation by subtracting the 30 days from the new close date. We can then send an email to the stakeholder. Or we can use the email alert that was previously created for the process builder. We can also use the send email action to avoid email alerts. Create a new send email element, give the element a name, include a body, we can use a new formula resource to make the element body tailored to each record. We can use the following formula, which will also include a dynamic link back to the original record. Then we can add a recipient like the stakeholder. We can add a subject like we had for the body and the subject will include the opportunity's name. We can then save the flow and see all the resources used in the toolbox. Let's say your company constantly creates duplicate opportunities. You want to quickly set a few fields and keep the rest of the information. We can use a screen flow to duplicate the record creation page and set additional values as needed. This is a great example of new functionality that is brought to flow and was not possible inside of Process Builder. On an opportunity, we can see the clone op action. By clicking it, we are greeted with a screen that pre-populates data from the opportunity. We can then press next to create a new record. From here, go to the opportunity list view and see the new record created. You can see the updated close date as well as the new description. We can go to the flow builder, then create a screen flow, open the toolbox on the left, Create a new variable resource, call the resource record ID, keep in mind this is case sensitive, select the data type as text, mark available for input, and save. The action passes into the flow using a get record element. We give the element a name, select the object as opportunity, make the filter the opportunity ID equals the record ID, then we can take the user input using the screen element. Add a screen element and give it a name. On the left side of the screen, go to the field section. We can use the record variable to directly edit values from the opportunity retrieved previously. 
we can select this variable, then drag its fields that we want to edit. In this case, we will want to edit the close date and the description. From here, we need to prep the record for insert. We can use the assignment element to edit a few fields values on the original record. First, we want to set the opportunities ID as empty stream. This is a required step to properly insert the record. Next, let's set the stage as prospecting to ensure that new opportunities are not created as closed one. Then we can add a create records element. This will save the duplicate record. We can give it a name, then select the opportunity variable. From here, we can save the flow, activate it, and add it to a page layout. To do so, navigate to Opportunity inside the Object Manager, and go to Buttons, Links, and Actions, create a new action, change the action type to Flow, give it a name, and save. Then, we want to add this to the page layout. Go back to Opportunity, inside the object manager, then go to page layouts, select the relevant page layout, go to mobile and lightning action section, drag the clone op action to the page layout, and of course, save the page. And that's the basics of Flow. If you're looking for more tutorials, check out this video I made on how to clone a quote.